Assalamu alaikum. Uh, when you are asked to design a controller for a particular system, you are provided with design specifications. Design specifications are generally you have transient specifications, which are generally characterized in terms of, for example, overshoot, rise time, and settling time. There is another very important design specification, which is stability. You have always to ensure the stability even if this is not explicitly mentioned in the design specifications. And uh, the third important design specification is steady state errors. Uh, the transient characteristics and stability, these are mainly determined by the closed loop poles of the system. And steady state error, in, we have learned, it can be characterized in terms of type of the system. So in today's lecture, we shall learn how to improve the steady state error for a particular system. Uh, by improving, we mean we want to have less, uh, as small steady state error as possible. Ideally, we want to have a zero steady state error. What do we mean by zero steady state error? Zero steady state error means what, whatever is our desired output, the same should be the actual output. You remember our block diagram. Uh, here, this was the reference input, which is also uh, the desired output and the actual output. The difference of desired output and actual output is called error. Ideally, this error should be equal to zero. To understand how we can improve a steady state error, let's uh, have a system described by this block diagram. In the first step, we shall design this gain k such that our transient characteristics are achieved. We have learned in the last lecture that how we can design this gain to achieve the required design specification. Uh, here is the root locus for this system. We have a pole P1, another pole and third pole and here is the root locus. Suppose that from the transient characteristics uh, we have found the location of closed loop poles and then we have determined the gain corresponding to these desired closed loop poles and suppose that we are happy with the transient characteristics what we want to do is we want to improve the steady state error for this particular system the steady state error we can see that this is type 0 system so steady state error for a step input it will be given by 1 over 1 plus kp. kp, if you remember, is equal to limit s tends to 0 g of s, which in this case, uh, uh, including k, this one as well, uh, this will be equal to 1 over 1 plus k over p1, p2, p3, which is non zero. And we want to have the steady state error equal to zero, what we can do? Uh, the, you remember the type of the system? So we, if we can somehow improve the type of the system, the steady state error will be reduced. So what if we add an integrator over here? By integrator, uh, the type of the system will be increased and the steady state error will be decreased. That is, in addition to these poles, we have a pole of our compensator. What will be the effect of this integrator on the transient characteristics? Uh, the effect will be that uh, the root locus will be disturbed. So our root locus, new root locus, will not pass through these points. Uh, and hence, our transient characteristics will also be disturbed. But we do not want to disturb the transient characteristics because we are satisfied with it. Uh, we can see that new root locus looks like this one uh, sketched by a blue line so it does not pass through the, de the uh, desired closed loop poles although the steady state error has been decreased because type of the system is increased but transient characteristics are also disturbed what we can do we do not want to disturb the transient characteristics and at the same time we want to improve the steady state error so how we can achieve this root locus is now no more passing through these uh, poles. Why? Because the angle condition 
is not satisfied. Why angle condition is not satisfied? Now the, there is an additional angle contribution by the, this pole. Angle contribution due to this pole, this pole and this pole was already there and that was satisfied for uh, angle condition was satisfied for this point. Now due to this additional pole angle condition is no more satisfied and that is why the new root locus is not passing through these points. So what we can do? Uh, we can uh, add a zero very near to this pole. What will be effect of adding this zero near to the pole? There will be an angle con contribution due to this pole and almost the same angle contribution uh, will be there due to zero. So net angle contribution by this uh, new pole zero combination will be approximately zero. So again, the root locus will pass through this point. That is, if we add both this pole and a zero very near to this pole, uh, the root locus will look like this one. This was original uh, root locus. This was original root locus. And due to addition of a pole and zero combination, this uh, will be uh, this will be part of root locus, and there will be only slight change in this uh, uh, this graph, almost the same as the actual one. So by this combination, again, angle condition will be satisfied, and transient characteristics will not be disturbed. That is the controller over here uh, is given by a pole and a zero. A pole at origin and a zero very near to origin. There is sometimes also a tunable gain over here, which is uh, in most cases nearly equal to one. Uh, this what should be the value of this ZC? ZC should be a small number such that this zero is very close to the pole. This kind of controller is called PI controller, proportional plus integral controller. Why? Because if I write it in this form, uh, this is KC plus KC ZC over S. So here is a proportional term and here is an integral term. That is why this controller is called PI controller. PI controller is utilized to eliminate or reduce steady state error. The design procedure is very uh, simple. You place uh, a pole at origin and a zero very near to the pole. So a simple transfer function of a PI controller. Here the only parameter that you need to determine is ZC. KC is uh, always uh, almost equal to one. Uh, let's elaborate it with the help of one example. So we have uh, this particular system with g of s given by this expression. We want to de uh, determine this value, value of this gain such that zeta is equal to 0.174. This zeta requirement, this comes, out, comes from the overshoot requirements, that is the transient characteristics. We have already learned the uh, procedure to determine this gain k in the last lecture. The procedure is simple, sketch the root locus. That is uh, for this particular system, the root locus is, uh, this is the root locus, you will sketch it according to the scale and then uh, determine angle corresponding to this zeta, that angle is uh, given by this line. This angle comes from this zeta requirement is 102 degrees. Uh, so to achieve this zeta, closed loop poles should be located at this point. These are read from the graph and this point is at s equal to, this point is s equal to. So once we have this point s, the desired closed loop pole, then the gain corresponding to this closed loop pole can be determined from the magnitude condition. That is, uh, this uh, is equal to one. Uh, at s equal to this desired point. Uh, from here, we have uh, this thing k equal to 1 over g of s absolute value at s equal to uh, s1. Uh, from here, we can determine 
the value of game k as we discussed in the last lecture this comes out to be equal to 164 uh, so game corresponding to this point is 164 now we are happy with the transient characteristics and we want to design a pi controller design of pi controller is very simple we place a pole at origin and a zero very near to it so therefore we have this controller gc of s uh, at s so this term very near uh, this is a relative term. So for example, we have uh, this controller uh, This controller GC1 and another controller GC2 so which controller is better? So as far as transient characteristics is concerned here this pole zero combination will have less distortion on the root locus and therefore there will be less distortion on the transient characteristics compared to that this uh, uh, compensator or controller will have more uh, distortion on the root locus and therefore uh, more uh, distortion in the transient characteristics however there is another uh, effect as well uh, as far as implementation issues are concerned maybe this controller is difficult to in implement how do we implement this uh, such kind of transfer function? For example, with an open and combination of voltage and uh, combination of resistor and capacitor. So maybe corresponding to this numerical value, there comes out to be uh, value of resistors and capacitors which are not physically realizable. So one dis disadvantage of selecting a very very small value is implementation issue. There is another disadvantage that is called the tail effect what is tail effect uh, for this particular system uh, uh, this system with this particular compensator compensator will be somewhere here in cascade with the transfer function so here is gc uh, of s so with uh, for example this particular compensator we shall have such a response of the system the steady state error will be finally zero and for this particular compensator we shall have a long tail so although this compensator will have less distortion in the transient characteristics but there will be a long tail in the uh, response of the system so we uh, see this with the help of uh, MATLAB program and uh, see a comparison between this controller and this controller as well so let's do it with MATLAB so let's uh, verify our design using MATLAB so our transfer function of the system is uh, given by uh, this uh, we can use this any command zpk is convenient over here there is a pole at s equal to minus 1 s equal to minus 2 and third pole is at s equal to minus 10 uh, we can sketch the root locus uh, for this transfer function uh, so root locus here is the root locus which is uh, almost the same which we have sketched and uh, here uh, in this uh, MATLAB I can drag this uh, point to uh, find uh, the location of uh, desired closed loop poles uh, our damping zeta desired damping is 0 0.174 if I drag it to that point uh, 174 so if I drag it so again corresponding to this uh, damping is approximately 165 uh, which we determined uh, to be equal to 164 so let's see the transient characteristics of the system with this particular uh, uh, gain uh, we have uh, another figure uh, so that uh, we can plot the step response on a separate figure the closed loop transfer function t is equal to uh, the gain multiplied by G and unity feedback and then uh, the step response of the closed loop transfer.
transfer function. Uh, the step response is uh, given by this graph. And uh, we were happy with these uh, transient characteristics. However, you can see that there is a steady state error. The final value, desired value is 1. However, actual uh, final steady state value is uh, about 0 0.9. There is a steady state error. We wanted to design a controller to remove this steady state error. For that purpose, we have designed two PI controllers. Uh, the first one, GC1, was uh, given by uh, this expression. We had placed a zero close to the pole. And uh, uh, let's uh, check uh, the new root locus. So uh, we shall plot this new root locus on this graph so that we can see the difference of the uh, new uh, actual root locus and uh, the new root locus. So our locus of uh, GC1 multiplied by G of S. So this new root locus is uh, here. Uh, here is a, a pole and very close to it is a zero and there is a new root locus which almost overlaps with the actual root locus. Uh, let's see the step response of uh, this uh, new system. So new closed loop transfer function is uh, uh, given by this thing 164 multiplied by transfer function of the compensator multiplied by the transfer function of the system and unity feedback. We want to plot uh, uh, it on this uh, graph so let's use the command hold on hold on uh, maybe uh, and then the step response of uh, T2 uh, on the same graph that is given over here. So the transient characteristics uh, that is the overshoot and uh, rise time etc for this blue curve which is the actual system and this uh, orange graph which is the system with the compensator are almost the same. The overshoots are in both the systems are almost the same. However uh, uh, this uh, steady state error for this compensator system has become equal to zero. The steady state value finally reaches uh, to equal to 1. Uh, let's uh, uh, see the second compensator which is GC2. Uh, here we have uh, placed the 0 still more closer with the uh, pole and let's see its uh, step response uh, of the closed loop system with the second compensator. Uh, this uh, uh, Let's define T3 to be equal to feedback combination of uh, the second compensator, the plant and the computed gain. So that is given by this expression and then the step response of uh, T3 uh, on the same graph. Uh, so here this third graph, this yellow line is uh, the step response of compensatory system with uh, uh, the second compensator. Over here, we can see that this blue curve and yellow curve uh, over almost overlap. That is, uh, this second compensator has less effect on the transient characteristics, both the uh, actual system and the uh, compensator system have same overshoot almost. Uh, and however, uh, there is a long tail in the response. This will finally grow to you can uh, expand the scale uh, plot this graph for longer time and you will see that finally this uh, reaches to the steady state value of one this uh, yellow curve however there will be a very long tail and that is uh, a disadvantage so uh, the conclusion is if you place uh, the pole uh, of the compensator if you pl place the zero of the compensator very very close to the pole then there will be a long tail uh, and if you uh, place uh, a zero uh, not very uh, very very close to the pole there will be small tail however transient characteristics will be slightly disturbed so for your particular application whatever is more suitable you will use that particular controller for that application